People are dying at 40 and being buried at 80. But I, there's a lot of people that aren't living in their truth and, and that creates this um, cognitive dissonance, you know, walking around with this disparity between what you do out there in the world and who you really are. That causes pain. That causes a chemical reaction. That causes things like depression and, uh, and a, you know, a feeling of um, being lost. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of people, I think, I think, what coronavirus has, you know, certainly taught us recently is a lot of people have recalibrated on that, you know, recalibrated on their happiness, on their on their sense of fulfilment, their meaning, purpose, started new businesses, started side hustles, you know, innovated, adapted in their businesses and in their lives. And, uh, you know, I think it's been a good stock take for everyone. Value. When you place your values, again, when you place your values and you place what it is that you choose in juxtaposition with your values, your level of fulfillment and higher emotions is based on how closely in alignment you are. That decision is with your values. The closer you are, yeah. the more authentic yeah. that you're being in that space. And now you're lit. Now you have your flame. Now you tapped into your internal flame. No, mm. Now you no longer need the outside validation. It's nice mm. when you get it, but you no longer need it because now you've connected your internal intentions which are based off your values to your mission and now you're forever motivated because motivation no longer depends on how you oh, feel can, and no, that's, that's the decision i made is i can literally it's the filter it's the the filter um that i look at my life through this bucket list stuff i look at my life through my bucket list through like i i rev but this isn't by the way this isn't just about ticking a whole bunch of cool stuff off before you die and it's not just about travel that's why i wrote this book the my bucket list blueprint right Mm. It's a 12 letter acronym that, that helps people write a personally meaningful and holistic bucket list. And that's what I did the TED talk on and what we train people in. And look, at the end of the day, that is my filter. It's, but it's not just a bucket list. It's really about how a person reverse engineers every aspect of their life in order to make this stuff come to fruition. It's the growth of them on their journey towards that, these self-imposed destinations. But more importantly, Harry, more importantly, it's about the person that exists on the other side. And that's the person we don't know yet. What, if you write, if, if, folks, if you write shit down and get it out of your head, that is a conscious process, right? There's actually studies that if you write stuff down, there's more consciousness going into that exercise than actually typing into your phone, believe it or not. So if you write shit down, you've got a 42% more likelihood of it actually manifesting. You're halfway there if you write stuff down. Take time out of your life to work on your life. Grab a book, watch the TED Talk, use this as inspiration, talk to Harry, whatever. At the end of the day, get your bucket list out of your head and onto paper. It's funny how the universe, God, whoever you want to speak to, finds a way to make this stuff happen. It's our reticular activating system, our, goo, our internal Google machine that you right now you're not typing anything into you're not searching for shit because you're so your bucket list right now is up there with your daily to-do list and guess which one gets done first on a day-to-day -day basis because mm. you're so important you're so busy you're so busy being busy it's like this weird fucking badge of honor that we use on a day-to-day -day basis what are you bragging or complaining i don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so separate the two that's been my job for my job for for um you know over 10 years now as the bucket list guy getting people to actually get this stuff out of your head all right and, and so everything that he said is exactly what i've what I also speak and teach about, you know, and, and so what he said about being writing it down from paper, it's not real until it's written down. It's not, that's what I tell my people in my practice. It's not real until you write it. See up here, it's oh, yeah. real. It does have an impact on the body. Every thought has a corresponding impact on the body, but see when you take mm -hmm. that and then you write, you've taken something that you created up here, your creation, whatever it is. And now you are putting it in 
this physical reality where now other people can see it as well. Not that it's for mm. other people, but mm. that is a radical act of manifestation that you just did. And you've made it real for yourself when you're writing mm. it down. Now yeah. it can, it can die off if you don't continue to feed it by being intentional towards it, which brings me to my next point that my brother was saying that I also said my own way, which is intentionality reflects relationship. And what I mean mm. by that is whatever we whatever we have a relationship with or whatever we seek a relationship with, we are intentional about responding to that. Try to have a relationship, a romantic relationship and not be intentional in that relationship. Try to have a business relationship and not be intentional about showing up to that job for that business relationship. It's not going to last very long. And so intentionality re reflects relationship when it comes down to living a values based life. You have to be intentional about filtering your moment to moment decisions through your values because your values reflect your mm. behavior, your behaviors. Mm. It reflects mm. your mindset. It reflects your very way of life. And so when you tune, attune your frequency up into the affirmation, now you no longer wait until you don't have to wait until death knocks on your door. There's a reason why I said my favorite author, Cleo DeBron says, if you want to understand left life, look at it in the heart of death. Why would it take cancer for us to decide to truly live when all we've been given is time to live and we are already born dying? Do we not realize that? And many of us won't die no, of old don't. age. They don't. They don't. No, the don't. key is, is like, all right, remove yourself for a second. You know, I'm so busy being busy. Look, I get it. I'm a, I'm a mum. I've got kids. I've got responsibilities. We've got a two income house. When am I going to do my, you know, when, you know, this whole bucket list thing seems like a pipe dream. I'll get to that when I, when I retire. Yeah, that's the whole thing, right? We live in this delayed gratification society. I'll be happy when syndrome, hmm. right? So, so that has led us to increases in depression. You know this. Increases anxiety, increases of suicide, use suicide, the overprescription of antidepressants. This, the stats are stupid. All right, and also, and also now um, we've got this thing. It's it it is. We know what a pandemic is. This is an epidemic, and it's called the loneliness epidemic. It's a real thing. Google it. <laughs> um, no, but that, that statement. Please say it again. Please say it again oh, for look, the people. Yeah, look, these statistics are going through the roof. You know, the the loneliness epidemic, the depression, all that sort of thing. Um, it, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. This is the adverse effect of social, the adverse effect of what social media is doing. We're all we're all in this state now of we're comparing our behind the scenes footage with someone else's highlights reel. It's making us depressed. I mean, we're, we're we're in a perfect storm of mental health right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we we really are. And at the end of the day. This is my bit. This is the way myself and now my coaches around the world are trying to change that narrative, trying to reverse some of these stats. You know, 89% of people who go to work every day in America are, are what they call disengaged. It's a real stat. That's 89% of people who go to work every day are not into what they're doing. Mm. They're just getting the paycheck coming home. Mm. So to, to what you're doing is helping people live a more congruent life to discover these values, to discover what, what gives them meaning, pleasure, fulfilment, and, and get them to enact that. And you said, look, it's about the psychology. It's about the mindset. It's about uncovering these values, but it's also about taking fucking action. So the question is, are you truly living? You know, do you experience life or, or are you in this state of stagnation of liminal space where you are halfway here, but halfway gone? As my brother alluded to earlier, mm. you know, burying yeah. people at the age of 80, but they stop living at the age of 40. Are you mm. truly living? You know, and if you're not truly living, if you're not truly fully experiencing life in the full array of colors that are available to life, if you're in this space of melancholy, if you're in this place of liminal space, understand that there's always a choice. Anything not growing is dead. And so we should be growing into the day that we die. And so there's a choice to be mm. made that you have not made yet. And that choice is, uh, using the loose translation from Lao Tzu, again, the choice is to let go of who you once were so that you can become who you might be. And I know how scary Ooh. that is for you. I know how scary mm. it is for you to even consider who you might be because that represents unknown. You know what's back there, but understand this, the past is for reference, not residence, right? And so we learn from the past and we, we take those truths from the past, but we only build upon that. And so we must lean into the discomfort of the unknown because the unknown is where the excitement is at. Mm. For those mm. of us who are looking for a little bit more excitement in our lives, stop playing it safe. 
your kids, guys, your kids want, want you to be happy, right? They don't want you to be unhappy. I want my parents to be happy. They're in this. They're in their mid seventies. I want them to be, lead the most fulfilled life as I possibly can. They can possibly have. Spend all their money, do all the experiences, and be happy. Be the example for me to follow. And you want your kid. You would never give your kids advice about playing small, would you? Exactly. Gandhi said, "If you if you want to if you want to see the change, and you be the change." And so, what I tell parents, I was saying, is that in my in my practice, that if they want to be the best parent that they can be, then what you what you do is that you learn how to be the best parent you can be to yourself. When you do that, you never have to worry about being the best parent to your child because you cannot give to the other what you yourself do not have. Don't expect to project something that you do not have first for yourself. Do not expect to project love to your child if you don't love yourself. Do not expect to project hopes into your child if you don't have hope for yourself. Whatever we feel out ourselves it up with that is what is projected outward i wanted to just everything you're hitting on i gotta bring up bonnie wear how I not bring up bonnie wear i know you're familiar with bonnie wear yeah got a book right here so then you can articulate her top five regrets then hmm. yeah number one is uh top oh. five regrets of the dying yeah she was a oh, she's an aussie uh palliative care nurse lit you know working in nursing homes looking after old people Mm -hmm. uh, her blog that became a best-selling book, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, should be, should be, should be, should be right here somewhere. I don't know. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Dog-eared, just in case. <laughs> um, number one, I don't have to look at these, but uh, number one is I wish I lived a life true to myself, not what yeah. others expected of me. Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. So that's, you know, not, not keeping up with the Joneses, being yourself, getting out of those family traditions. Regret number two, here it is. I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Mm. We, can always, we, we can all work smarter, not harder, right? Mm. I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. Mm. Guys, more depression in, you, in us. We need to talk more. We need to be open, more vulnerable, more authentic. Mm. Uh, number... Four, I wish I stayed in touch with my friends. Get proactive. Don't let them make the call. You make the call. You put, you get on the front foot. You put your friends together. And also seek other people that can, um, that can add to your circle of influence. Jim Rowan said, you know, you are the result of the five closest people around you. Mm. Um, and if you do a stock take of your friends, is there some that, you know, when you catch up with them, you feel like you need a wash or a holiday afterwards? <laughs> Energetic yeah, time, alignment. Oh, yeah. T Go ahead. Time, to, time to shake that up. And the last one, which is scary, is I wish I let myself be happier. Mic drop. So it's it's living in in truth, uh, being lit. The bucket list is an activity that represents you know your authenticity. You see, when we choose not to be fully present with life and fully connected and step into our authenticity, it's as if we separated ourselves from a part of ourselves. And if you separate a limb from the body long enough, it will, it, mm. it 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 dies, just like mm. a branch that's separated from a tree. And so the only way to fully experience mm. life is to reconnect with those parts of us that we put in the closet because people weren't ready to see that. It's not about do you have a stadium of people waiting for you? It doesn't matter about who the how doesn't matter. It's what you decide for yourself. And when you step mm. into that authenticity, you will see synchronicity kick, kick up in your life. And then just these things, these, these opportunities just begin to fall mm. with the synchronicity mm. that just assist you along your way. But you have to make the choice and then believe that you can actually experience that, mm. you know? Yeah, and that's the, I like that word, synchronicity. Yeah. And that, that's what happens when you start writing this stuff down, start getting it out of your head, start making it more conscious, you know, decision and direction for it. When you begin right. to develop a game plan on how to live in your life, uh, mm -hmm. live according to your values, according to the, your plan of approach, again, your approach to life, when you develop your your approach to life and you live through that, you develop your 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 operations, your environment, your entire foundation based off of how you approach life and then move into the action plan. 
Mm, that's mm. when you have consistent uh, uh, access to these higher emotions. Happiness mm. fleeting. You have to do something, mm. but also mm. there's there's something to 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 be done with mm. many of these, but just doesn't take that much work. And so peace oh, yeah. is the yeah. like my brother said, the absence of cognitive dissonance. And so in your circle, he mentioned the circles again. Your network determines your net worth. And so when you look at your circle, if you don't have people in your circle that is energetically aligned with you, understand it like a cold front and a warm front. When they come together, they're going to be tornadoes. So if you want the tornadoes and the hurricanes and whatever else out of your life, make sure that you get some people in your life that you are energetically aligned with. That's going to save you mm. a whole lot of self-chosen suffering. Life brings suffering. Don't, mm. don't, 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 don't mistake that life will bring you pain, but much of the pain mm. that we experience is self-chosen suffering. And it comes mm. from our ignorance because ignorance and freedom can't coexist. Brother. Mm. And he also mm. said, Bruce Lee said, be like water. And I think in our times, I think in our times with uh, the cyclones, the, the shit that's going on in the world, the pandemic is by, back to that control the controllables, you know, stop being everyone's bitch, try, stop being the bitch of the world. You know, and you can control what you can control. That's our inner circle. That's that's us. You can control your mental health and you can control those little words that you say to yourself when you're by yourself and they're the most, they're the most poignant words. Um, you can be either at the cause or the effect of everything in every single freaking moment. So... Um, I hope someone takes, you know, some people take this away and 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 really enact and and you know get at the cause of their life because life is way too short not to.